<sighs> well, I promised that I would be doing random shit on this alternate channel. And that's just what we're going to do today. Random shit. Last time around it was um, poker. This time, guns. So if you're a gun enthusiast, this might be of use to you. If you are a gun enthusiast, you know, you really got to have at least one good revolver. If you're only going to have one. Um, granted, you don't want to charge into a battlefield with a six-shooter when you could have had a Glock. But, I mean, revolvers are awesome, you know. And um, I guess if you're going to have one revolver, it probably ought to be a 357 Magnum. The reason being is you, it covers 38 Special all the way through 357. I mean, then you got a little more territory there. And I guess if you're going to have one revolver, you might as well make it a 357 and you might as well make it, you know, a good one. So in my case, uh, I picked up a 686 Plus from Smith & Wesson. That is um, a seven round. And uh, just a fine ass gun, just a beautiful gun. The trigger, wonderful. So it's just a great gun. And so it comes to my FFL dealer in December and I'm looking at it and I pick it up and looked at it and immediately I noticed that the barrel was off. And I thought, you know, I could just leave it at the FFL, go home, call the gun store online that I bought it from and tell them I want a replacement. Then they'll ship the new one out, they'll, they'll call the old one back and then I can pick up the new one. But I thought, no, you know, this is Smith & Wesson. I mean, I'll just send it into Smith & Wesson and let them take care of it. I'll keep the gun. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't have a problem with the rest of the gun. It's just the barrel. No problem. Okay. I, I had never pursued a warranty with them before, and I didn't know any better. All right? And a lot of you out there right now are laughing at me. Okay? If you know anything about Smith & Wesson, you're laughing at me. You, 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 the minute I said, oh, I'll just let them take care of the warranty, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't know. Okay? I really didn't. Uh, what was it? The 20th of December, I think I called in, I, or when, I don't know when it was. I, 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 I looked at the gun for a couple weeks and thought, you know, is this a, it's a Christmas season. And I thought, is there something wrong with this gun or not? I mean, it's like, and I look at it and it just, it was off. And I'm like, well, why is it off? Is this something I could fix on my own? I started looking online and I found out that this is a very common problem. And it, from what I can see on the internet, this problem has been cataloged by various users on forums and YouTube videos going back, what is five or six years? It seems that about that long ago, Smith & Wesson just shat into the world a countless number of improperly made revolvers, okay? They just completely shit the bed and their assembly manufacturing process, they, they, somebody dropped the ball in a huge way, okay? For, because the problem has been 686s, Tremendous, tremendous issue with 686 is made in the last five years. But performance centers, um, you know, the airway, all of them, any, any uh, pretty much all of their revolvers, uh, there's at least a, a significant number of um, off-center barrels. Well, it seems particularly common for the 686 Plus, the uh, L-frames. Um, I, I don't know, but it, it certainly... Smith & Wesson's got a fucking issue on their hands. And it seems to me now, it, it, what's going on is the last five years, Smith & Wesson has been doing this shuck and jive, trying to, trying to make the market out there just absorb all these shitty revolvers that they knew that they put out and they didn't want to have to deal with. So they have played a game now for four or five years and it, they still can't get rid of all of them, okay? I don't know if they're still making them this poorly now, I, I don't know. I, I mean, but surely something happened four or five years ago and it took them time to figure out what's going on. But they know there's a problem. Here's how I figured all this out, besides looking at everybody online. I called in to Smith & Wesson, you know, not long after I got the gun home, researched it online a little bit, and I called into their customer service, and a guy answers the phone. He sounded like he was an actual Smith there. I don't know if he was just a, a phone operator. He seemed to like know about guns, and so I assumed he was a smith, or at least was involved in the actual, you know, servicing of warranty of guns, okay? It all makes sense now, but when I called in, I said, well, yeah, I, I got it, you know, just bought it brand new, never fired it, never took it to the range, I'm uncomfortable to shoot it in this condition anyway, and I said, and he said, what's the problem? I said, the barrel's off. My words, barrel's off. He goes, oh, okay, so you got a canted barrel. 
And I said, Kant did, I mean, what's this, what's, I, I, you know, I, I'm pretty good with words, but I really, at that point, I didn't really think of the term canted. So, and then I realized he meant clocked, twisted. And I said, well, you're saying twisted. I'm looking at it. And I told him, I said, I'm looking at it. I did a safety check. Shut the fuck up. I, and, and I'm looking at it and it doesn't look like it's twisted. It looks like it's just off. And he says, well, he says, well, we can send you a label. And he's ready for me. He's got the words. He's got the little memorized little games. Okay. What they want to do is they want to deter revolver people like us from forcing the issue with them and make them take these things back. Okay. Now, when he says can't, it, and then he said, uh, you know, we'll take a look at it, we'll adjust the barrel, and then he says this, he says, it's going to be a couple of weeks, it's Christmas, blah, 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 we're going to, you may not see the gun for three or four weeks, yeah, 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 trying to di di distract me, trying to discourage me. I said, okay, that's fine, send me a label. And he says, and we get it, he goes, I can't look at it, you know, obviously I can't look at it over the phone, you say it's off, but, you know, our, our Smiths will look at it, and if, if they... You know, if, if they think it's within spec, within spec, there's really nothing more we can do about it. I said, yeah, have you seen the gun yet? I'm, I, I said to him, I said, okay, now did you hear how I described the gun? He said, yeah. I said, well, I said, I'm looking at the gun, okay? I'm, I'm doing what I'm, I'm talking to you now the way I was talking to him. I said, I'm looking at the top of the gun. I'm looking at the sight, which runs up the middle of the top of the frame. And then you look at the um, uh, ribbed, I guess, area on the top of the barrel. These two things are not in line with each other. And he goes, so yeah, like I said, now this is his words. He says, like I said, he goes, that happens sometimes. We'll give it a twist. And, and, then, and then he says, okay, well, that's the only problem. Look at it. That's the only problem that's too, you know, it needs to be, as they say, overclocked. It just needs to be corrected in that regard. Then that's fine. But why is he setting this up? I'm listening to him, you know. And then he says, if, 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 if after our, our uh, you know, our texts take a look at it, or Smiths take a look at it, that's all we can do. He's already now seeding into my mind to settle. I paid, I paid $675 with the, the uh, you know, um, FFL dealer fee and background check. It's a, it's a $700 gun for me, okay? And I'm listening the way he's talking, and I'm thinking, no, 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 no. This guy's playing a game with me, but I don't know what else to do, so he sends me the label. Okay, fine. And then put it in the letter with the gun, what the problem is. So I wrote, on, I wrote it out. Now, because of the way he was using his words, I was more explicit in my first letter to them. I said, this gun has an off-of-center barrel, okay? Because I'm looking at the barrel, and it's not... Twisted. If you look at the front of the barrel, I mean, the barrel, there's a top, a bottom, okay? And you can, you know, say it's clocked by looking at the front of the barrel, you know? And it was perfectly in line, perfectly up and down. So if you were to twist this to get the barrel in line with the top of the frame, you would actually make the barrel underclocked or overclocked, whichever one you think that is. I don't know. So I, I, wrote, I wrote that down. And I said, so I, I said, I can't accept this gun as within Smith & Wesson spec. If that's where this is going, I want my money back, okay? I sent it out. They hold the gun for what was almost a month, okay? Whatever they did to this gun took five minutes. They deliberately held that gun. They deliberately took their time. They finally sent it back to me. They sent no email to me informing me the gun was finished and was on its way. I just, I got a little, uh, a, thing from FedEx let me know the gun was on its way. Okay, gun comes back, I pick it up. What did he do? He twisted the barrel, okay, towards so that the top of the gun would, tur would, would twist towards the middle of the gun. Now the gun is visibly leaning. The sight, when you look down through the rear sight to the front sight, the, the front sight is visibly leaning to the right, okay? So in other words, and this is what I want to point out to Smith & Wesson revolver people, canted is not the problem. I'm going to guarantee that that's not the problem with most of these damn guns, that it was twisted too much when they, I guess the barrel is screwed on, right? And at some point they, they get it in there and then they, you know, it, it hits the point and it's supposed to be threaded in 
and stop at the right point. And I guess there's a little variation of how, how hard they can twist it in there. So it was twisted in too far. That's not the problem, okay? My gun was aligned, but really what happens is this whole barrel, okay, you look at it, this whole barrel is, was put into the frame off. So it doesn't matter how you twist it, it's always going to be left of center. Even now that this barrel is underclocked, I guess you would say, to the point that the entire barrel is leaning to the right visibly. But it's still left of center. That's how far off center this gun was built. Okay, that's what they're fighting. That's the problem with these fucking things. I mean, listen, if they're accidentally twisting them on too tight, oh, come on, that's no big deal. Send the damn thing back, we'll fix it, and we'll send you a little happy meal in return, you know. But this game they're doing, they're preventing people from saying, whoa, 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 this gun was built wrong. Okay? It's not canted, it's a lemon. This is a lemon. I, I don't, I, you, you want me to pay $675 for a barrel that, I mean, honest to God, when you, when you go to shoot the gun, you look at the gun, and the whole thing's off. It's not extreme, and I don't even know if the gun's unsafe to fire. It doesn't matter. I don't want this fucking thing. So what they need to do is they need to give me a replacement. They know it. And they don't want to. This is why I will never deal with Smith & Wesson again. Okay? And I don't want to sound like I'm a disgruntled, you know, guy. I mean, in reality, I don't really... Whatever. I mean, this is business. I understand that. And yes, I am indignant about spending $700 on a gun. Okay? Because of the Smith & Wesson reputation, why I accepted this gun... And then I send it back and they do a little dance with me. So I'm making this video and I am going to update in a month or two. I'm, I'm, tomorrow, this gun goes back. Again, I was on the phone with them again when the gun arrived back to me. And I got on the phone and they did the same thing with me again, but they have a process. See, two weeks. Uh, well, if you send it in for a second time, it automatically gets pulled. So now there's a different tier of gunsmiths that are going to take a look at. In other words, I think where we are now is, particularly with the letter that I'm enclosing with this gun this time around, I, I've made it clear, I said, I know what you fuckers are up to. This gun was, is a fucking lemon. Don't fuck with me, guys. I, I, I Listen, I got, I, got more, I got nothing better to do than, than fuck back, okay? I'm on the internet, bitch. So, I'm putting this out there. A lot of you Smith & Wesson guys, take a look at your gun again. And don't live with that crooked barrel shit. This, it may not be that it just needs a little twist. If that's all it needs, you're good. Listen, if that's all it needed, I, I'm fine that they accidentally screwed it on a little too tight. That's all right. Or too loose, whatever it might be. But this is an entirely different situation. Smith & Wesson has been making lemons for many years. That's just the reality of the situation. Go look at the internet. Go look at the feedback on these guns. It's a damn shame because the Smith & Wesson 686 Plus, as the Yankee Marshall says, is the greatest handgun in the world. Or at least it could be. If so many of them weren't lemons.